I officially have a new favorite capture card recommendation, and it's from a company you may not have never ever heard of. And you can actually buy it. It's it's in stock. Watch out, Avermedia and Elgato. This bad boy is coming for you. This thing does pretty much everything. Even supports 4K pass-through and USB 2.0 if you need it. It's USB 3.0 by default, of course. And it even works on mobile. Well, sort of. What? This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die. You knew there was going to be an ad in this video. I just had a baby. I got bills to pay. <laughs> Nerd or Die is having a beat the clock sale at the moment where you can get 25% off some amazing stream layouts. I even use the Nerd or Die uh, Synthwave chat box for my streams because I really just had a hard time getting a chat box put together. They've got 15% off store wide, 25% off specific packages, and they even have specific stream overlays for as low as $2. Head over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die to learn more and sign up today. I'm eposvox, your stream professor, and today we're reviewing the Cloner Alliance Flint 4KP+. Plus. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, been around a while, you may know that I previously reviewed the original Flint 4KP back in, I want to say last year, 2019, and I was kind of annoyed by it because it was called the 4KP and it implied a 4K aspect to it but it did not support 4K pass-through nor capture, and it was kind of cheaply made. This one is an improvement in every possible way. We now have a nice metal enclosure. The specs are improved into what it's actually supposed to be, and it does some really cool stuff. Like I said, the build quality is just super nice. It's got a USB-C connector, and it can be used for type A or whatever. You can break it out, but USB-C by default. I love seeing stuff moving to that new standard. And also on the side, you have both a microphone and a line in input. So you can use a Go XLR or a mixer or a computer input, as well as a microphone from a gaming headset or something like that. It even has a line out to run to a mixer or Go XLR or headphones. Your headphone performance is kind of going to be hit or miss, though, since it's not headphone level. And then flip around to the other side, and we have HDMI 2.0 in and out for pass-through, lag-free pass-through, 4K pass-through, no HDR pass-through, and then 1080p capture, which we'll talk about in a moment with the specs. As of all, this thing's only 180 bucks, which is still a little pricey. I'd love to see it more closer to the $125 range uh, for this, you know, to be an amazing deal for like the number one recommend for me. Uh, but it is fairly cheap for compared to a lot of capture cards, especially with the current price gouging market. You can actually pick it up on Amazon today. And yeah. Let's talk about those specs real quick. Again, it does support 4K 60 Hertz pass through. So in and output, and then you can capture to 1080p 60 or whatever lower format you want. It does not support HDR in any capacity. So no HDR pass through, no HDR capture, none of that. You can't even turn it on, which is fine. Most people don't need it. It supports both YUI2, which is 422 color space and MJPEG uh, color modes for capturing. MJPEG is primarily leveraged for if it's connected to a USB 2.0 port and you can capture full 1080p over USB 2.0, which is pretty cool. This might be the only card on the market that you can pass through 4K and still capture, you know, you can pass through 4K and capture reasonable recordings on USB 2. Not that there's computers out there that can really do anything worth that to make it worthwhile, but you can technically do it with this card. It supports 720p and 1080i as well, and when I connect it to a computer, I get a couple interesting modes. There's no high refresh rate support. It's not a PC super friendly capture card for PC gaming modes. No high refresh rate support. It does support 24 hertz though, 23.97 and 24 hertz. If you're looking to use this as a filmmaking kind of recording kind of setup, you can't hook up a 24 FPS camera and get 24 FPS out of it. Not all capture cards can do that. I do want to note, because people keep asking about this though, I'll do another test stream before I upload this video just to confirm. But as far as I know, YouTube streaming doesn't actually support 24 FPS. It will actually up convert it to 30 FPS and look really bad in motion. So just keep that in mind. It's not the capture card doing things bad, it's YouTube itself, but I'll double check and add a little confirmation into this video. Now, also in the NVIDIA control panel, when I hook this up to a computer, 
it, sh it, it exposes 1440p support. And from what I can tell, I can send a 1440p signal to it. Now, I'm not 100% certain if this is just scaling on the graphics card or not, because when I hook it up to my Xbox One X, which also supports 1440p output, it doesn't give me that option, which tells me that it's not telling anything it supports 1440p, even if it does. So your mileage may vary there. It's mainly, it's gonna be for cameras or consoles or standardized formats. Not too much oddball support like 1440p, but there is some of the more lower resolution oddball standards like 1680 by 1050 or you know 1024 by 768, you know, some of those lower end formats. Speaking of retro stuff, uh, this actually works with all five modes of the OSSE. Well, all four modes of the OSSE: 2X, 3X, 4X, and 5X. All four of those were working through here. So I was able to capture 5X output from a Super Nintendo playing Castlevania with this just fine. Of course, it will crunch it down to a 1080p canvas. So you're getting some scaling differences there. People bring that up in the comments sometimes with how it looks. It may not be as sharp as a native 4K capture card that will capture the direct resolution, but you're able to use it and you're able to pass that through to your monitor and it looks great. An IMO, this is perfectly acceptable. For a capture card that supports the OSSC in this capacity is really great and that adds even more points to recommending in my book. This also works with my gaming phone, the Red Magic 5G. It has a two to one aspect ratio screen. I hooked up a USB to HDMI convert or USB C to HDMI adapter. I put it to this and it either the phone or this adjusted for that and output a 1080p signal, handled it fine at 60 FPS, which is phenomenal. No complaints there. However, it did not work with my iPad. This is probably an HDCP issue. I have iOS devices output a specific HDCP signal that you have to have a specific bypass for. Aver Media Capture Cards integrate this into the software. This didn't pick up anything at all, but the iPad Pro also can output HDR, so I don't know if that doesn't automatically turn off and maybe the HDR output was what was not compatible here. Either way, my iPad Pro did not work with this, but my gaming phone did. This is also a UVC capture card. I talk about this all the time. This is great, which means it's plug and play on any operating system and it works on your computer as if it were a webcam. So it will show up in the Windows 10 camera app, in Skype, in Zoom. It shows up in Discord. I could not get it to show an image in Discord. Something about the way it flips the image and then tries to scale it and stuff. It just, it doesn't get along with it. It probably can work. Someone just needs to like tweak it a little bit. Uh, but with Skype and Zoom, I had absolutely no problem with this other than keep in mind in Skype, unlike Zoom, you don't have the option to flip the image back. So you will get a mirrored image, but for camera hookups and things like that, this is freaking great. I did want to note though, that I did test it with some cameras as I usually do just to see how it works. With my GoPro, worked great, worked fine. With my Sony a7S II, however, which was a 4K output that I was expecting it to downsample to 1080p, clarity wise, it looked great, but the image, like the only color in the image was purple. It's like a Gerald Undone filter or something. <laughs> He's crazy. I don't know. Something about the color output settings on the A7S II was not cooperating. Most cameras are gonna be fine. The uh, I also tested it with a Panasonic G85. It was also fine. So just something was set weird on my A7S II that works with my Blackmagic devices, but not this. But overall, you'll be able to use this as a camera and a webcam replacement. And you'll even be able to run a microphone into it if you're for whatever reason not able to run it into your camera. So something like the Sony A5100 does not have a mic input jack. This does, you can pair them together, whatever. Latency wise, they tout super low latency as most capture cards do in the product pages for this. However, uh, I was getting about 75 milliseconds of input latency on this specific device. Not the fastest at all, but it's completely usable and passable and easy enough to sync up. However, a lot of my testing recently due to where my computer is in relation to my monitor has been done on front panel USB ports. And that might actually cause an issue compared to the rear, you know, direct on motherboard USB ports. So some of these capture cards I've reviewed recently, I do plan on going back on my test bench and retesting. So I have a link either to my website if I get the post up in time. I've been having issues with my website, so maybe not. Or the Google, Google Docs sheet where I have all of my latencies for capture cards always updated so that you can just check in from time to time and see which capture cards fall where. As mentioned, this capture card does have audio support. It's got 3.5 millimeter and line in both, which means you can use a microphone and a separate mixer or audio input device or game console or your monitor output 
You, you have m mixing options available to you. You also have line out to run to ideally a mixer, theoretically speakers. You can run it to headphones, but it's not going to be the same signal type. So your, your results are not going to be perfect. Uh, but this does give you a lot of flexibility with audio for the setup. It does pick it up in uh, the HDMI. It picks up the HDMI audio as well, of course. My complaint here is that you don't have separate audio devices for each of these, like that MoCo's capture card I just reviewed recently, or the Razer Ripsaw HD, which has a separate line-in jack audio device in Windows, a separate HDMI audio device in Windows, and so on. All capture cards need to do that IMO or give the option for either or. This one doesn't do it. You have to download one of their programs that you scan the QR code on their stuff and blah, blah, blah to download the programs for it and use their program to manually mix and mute or unmute the different audio sources to the singular audio output that you get in Windows from this, which is unfortunate. And this is what the Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset microphone sounds like running directly into the Flint 4K P Plus using the mic in jack. This is a test. This is a test. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing. As mentioned, this is one of the capture cards. Cloner Alliance has a few capture cards since they're UVC and they have a mobile app that's supposed to work on mobile. I've been really hoping to test more capture cards on mobile with my new gaming phone because it's powerful enough to really do some high quality streams at full frame rate and things like that. However, it did not recognize this device at all. The IP webcam app kept popping up asking if I wanted to use it, but it also didn't recognize it fully. Uh, so I was unable to use it with that phone. However, for whatever reason, my Pixel 2 XL was able to recognize it and use it, though it's only over a USB 2 connection since this is USB 2 Type-C. Uh, UVC support on Android is a complete disaster at the moment, so I don't know. Uh, their app does allow you to set bitrate up to like 10 megabits per second, uh, add your camera, add the capture card. You can live stream with it, record with it, take screenshots, things like that. So I set up a basic 1080p60 recording, recorded for a little bit. You're seeing the sample here. Uh, it's of course I, I did what the I did the only rational thing that anyone would do in my scenario which was to record my gaming phone with my other phone since I couldn't use my gaming phone to record anything else why not but it's pretty cool that it can work depending on what phone you have Final complaints I have, uh, as I always do with some of these generic capture cards, there's a little banner overlay that shows up in the lower third uh, to tell you whenever the signal changes or you even change color settings or anything like that, what resolution you're outputting, which is handy, but can be very annoying and it sticks around way longer than I want sometimes and it seems to stick around inconsistently. Like sometimes it'll just hang out for a while and sometimes it'll go away pretty quickly. And then there is a no signal screensaver whenever there's no signal. Uh, and both of these may bother people just because the more mainstream gaming capture cards don't do it. But overall, it's probably fine. And then again, the lack of separate audio devices is a pretty big bummer. But overall, in conclusion, $180, 4K pass-through, potentially 1440p support, 1080p60 uncompressed YUI2 capture, YUI2 after my own heart, and it supports all, five, all the way up to 5X modes from the open source scan converter. Don't know what else to say. Phenomenal capture card, way better than that Mocos I was just recommending for a little slightly cheaper. There's none of that washed out color look or anything like that. It looks great, it sounds great, it performs great, and it's in a small package. And you can buy it without it being on a shortage right now, at least at the time of recording. By the time you get it, I can't guarantee anything but that's what's going on right now. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Product links, as always, will be in the description below. Uh, check the playlist link in the video description for all of my video capture card reviews. I review a ton of them here on the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education, and please go check us out on Flowplane. Uh, you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, chat with me, join our inner circle on Discord through the Flowplane subscription that it gets you, and unlock some extra one-on-one -on -one tech support or some cool content, help support a new dad and content creator. I'm Apos Fox Extreme Professor. I'll see you next time.